Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, members of the public. Due to COVID-19 emergency, tonight's Committee of Adjustment hearing is being held by video conference at li and live streaming video at on the town's live stream webpage at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of the process is to review the application that is before us, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, or organizations. If a request for a deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant or authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of the hearing on oakville.ca and if you wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, that's 905-815-6095. The phone number will also be posted throughout the evening on the screen below the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call, and when you do call in, staff will ask for your name, item number that you wish to address, and your telephone number. Then further instructions will be provided to you to call back to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of the application and answer any questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for the presentation. You will need to state your full name and address for the record, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their name and address for the record, and a maximum of five minutes will be provided for each presentation. All remarks and questions are to be directed to the chair and any persons uh, and, beyond, and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be also at the discretion of the committee. The applicant agent will then be provided with further five minutes to respond to the comments made by interested parties and answer any questions that may arise from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns found in staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions at that time, they will have the opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into the committee for a decision and that will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must be do so in writing, preferably through email, to the Secretary Treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order for you to be included on the list that is used by the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of any appeal. Written notice of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variances and 15 for consent applications to the applicant, agent, and other person who filed a written request for such notice. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the local planning appeal tribunal and the last day to do to appeal the decision will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who has received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in the hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. So, uh, we have one regret for this evening, Mr. Hardcastle regrettably unable to join us. Do I have any declarations of uh, procuring interests? Okay, I see none, thank you. Okay, Madam Secretary Treasurer, um, if you have someone in queue that is waiting to request a deferral, you can please line them up uh, for the members of the public um, and anyone who is listening to the uh, live stream if you desire to get a deferral for your application, please uh, uh, indicate by raising your hand and the secretary treasurer will uh, unmute you to speak. Madam Chair, Mr. Um, 
Barrett wants to defer the application. Very well. Mr. Barrett, which application are you here for, sir? Uh, good evening. I'm here for application CAVA 025-2021-1177 okay. Summer Lease. Very good. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, the reason uh, for the deferral request is to address comments from Conservation Halton and uh, return as soon as possible once those have been addressed. Very well. We see that in the notes for your uh, application. Um, members, do you have any questions of Mr. Barrett at this time? I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, I note that there is a letter of objection from uh, Ms. An Andrea Mann and an observer, Mary Peruvis, uh, who may be here. Um, if they are, um, are they in the panel to speak? Um, Madam Chair, I do have Mary Peruvis. I will promote her. And, um, and then. Madam Chair, I promote Ms. Uh, Purvis to panelists if she wants to speak. Okay, very well. Uh, Ms. Purvis, I just wanted to promote you into the panel because I, I note that you wanted to be an observer. Mr. Barrett is seeking a deferral for his application to work with staff, um, particularly Conservation Halton. Um, just for you to know, you, you will get another notification when they have uh, been assigned a new um, hearing date and you would be able to um, view it at that time or participate should you choose to. Madam Chair, can you ask a mute uh, um, that person can okay. unmute himself? We can't hear you, so if you're on mute, can you please uh, unmute yourself? Okay, it doesn't seem like she's hearing us. She may have stepped away from the computer. All right. Um, members, I'm in your hands. Uh, all those in support of a deferral? Okay. The application has been deferred. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. You'll see the Secretary Treasurer when you're ready to get a new hearing date. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good night. Is there any uh, other application that is seeking a deferral, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, or anyone else that has raised their hand? No, I can't see nobody else to request deferral. Okay, very well. Then we will uh, take the first item on our agenda tonight, which is application CAV 020 of 2021 at 331 Shedden Avenue. Again, the application number is CAV 020 of 2021 at 331 Shedden Avenue. If you are interested in this application, please call 905-815-6095. Again, the number to call is 905-815-6095. And staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Hicks. Good evening, Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee. Thank you for uh, allowing me to speak tonight. Very, very brief. This is a application for a variance on the Shedden Road property. Uh, this was an item for the width of a parking space that was missed in site plan approval, then it was missed in building permit approval, and now we're registering the condominium declaration documents, and we've found that two of the parking spaces are 0.26 meters to uh, uh, not enough width due to them having a wall on either side. So, so a minor technical variance, uh, the parking space is still work as a parking space and actually they exceed our required parking anyway but we wanted to legalize them we have uh, seen the conditions that planning has proposed in terms of some notifications to residents and to condo owners and we're satisfied with those conditions but 
but um, as I say, a very straightforward application that uh, everyone in the town and ourselves seemed to miss in the first two rounds, and now it's been finally picked up. So, And it does relate to just two parking spaces that are in the underground garage adjacent to the entrance doors. So certainly happy to answer any questions if uh, the committee has any uh, questions about it. So. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. If there's any comments or questions of, of Mr. Hicks at this time from the committee members, I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone here who would like to speak to application CAV 020 2021 at 331 Shedden Avenue? Madam Chair, um, no, there is nobody who wants to speak. In regards to that. Okay, very well. Then we'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Uh, Madam Chair, having uh, reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as noting that the town staff report is in support of the application, also having taken into account the applicant's uh, presentation this evening, noting that there were no written or oral objections or support from the public. I am prepared to move the motion that the application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the uh, four tests of the Planning Act with the following conditions. <clears throat> One, that uh, the P10 and P21 parking spaces be permitted in general accordance with the parking plans dated 012521 and two the owner agrees to place a notification in all offers of purchase and sale or an equivalent for all units advising prospective purchasers that parking spaces p10 and p21 are deficient in size and may not be suitable for certain vehicles and three, that the owner provide confirmation that the condominium declaration has been updated to specifically identify all substandard parking spaces to the satisfaction of the town. And four, that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. And in cases where a building permit is not required, the proposed scope of work has not been fully completed. And finally, that the A002-A014 parking spaces be permitted in general accordance with the color coded the parking plan dated February 3rd. I think that last uh, uh, condition is actually uh, attached to um, another application, the one okay. after, yeah, I, it may have just printed okay. wrong on your sheet, yeah. So just the required conditions that I stated, one through four. Very well, thank you. All right, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Madam Chair, members, have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. So the next application is uh, CAV 021 of 2021 at 102 Grovewood Common. Again, the application is CAV 021 of 2021 at 102 Grovewood Common. If you are interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call, and you will be provided with further instructions to join the video conference. Ms. Secretary-Treasurer, I'll wait for your cue that you are ready, and uh, then we'll proceed. I'm ready. Okay, very well. Uh, who's the agent that we have with us tonight? Me. Good evening, Mr. Kitano. Can you just um, unmute yourself? Yes. Uh, good evening. Did I pronounce Chair, this? Did uh, I name. pronounce your name correctly? Uh, very close, Madam uh, Chair. It's Wayne Coutino. Coutino. Okay. Um, I'm here with Cozy Urban Planning on behalf of the 
owner, Madame Holmes. Um, address is 277 Lakeshore Road East. I have read through the staff report um, and agree with the recommendations and conditions. As such, I've prepared a very brief presentation if any desires uh, that I go through it. Yeah, go ahead. Since we are on a virtual uh, basis, it's nice for the public to have a view of what the application constitutes, and then we'll uh, go from there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the request is to permit obstructions adjacent to as-built parking spaces up to 1.3 meters in length, whereas an obstruction of 1.15 meters is permitted without having an increase to the width of the parking space. As shown on this uh, first slide, uh, the location is north of Dundas Street, um, and it's located between Trafalgar and east of Sixth Line. And this is part of an approved uh, site plan, as well as a draft approved plan of condominium. Uh, next slide, please. In particular, we're looking at the southeast quadrant of that previous site plan, and it's built in A. And we've shown a location of where the parking spaces are located underground. Essentially, the area connecting the underground parking between building A and building B, which is already built and uh, occupied. Um, next slide, please. That's uh, the approximate location of where the parking spaces are located. And these were identified through the as built survey for the plan of condominium. Um, essentially, if you find out the parking spaces were deficient and it's a very technical in nature due to required double column with an expansion joint to support the load above it. And this impacts about 13, well, impacts 13 parking spaces, A002 to A014. Um, next slide, please. So as shown in the call out box in the top right corner, uh, we're showing the approximate increase of 15 centimeters, which is very minor and hardly noticeable to the visible eye. And uh, we're showing that it has no impact to a door swing for a typical medium-sized sedan. Uh, as per conditions in the staff report, uh, the owner will notify potential purchasers through the purchase and sales agreement of these units which may limit the amount of door swing for a large oversized vehicle in this particular spaces. I'm happy to answer any further questions, uh, any questions that staff or others may have. Okay, thank you, Mr. Coutinho. Um, are there any questions or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Madam Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in or requested to speak to this application? I don't see anybody who wants to speak. Okay, to very well. Then we're ready to take the matter into committee. Who would like to make a... Uh, go ahead, Ms. Murray. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and um, thank you, uh, Mr. Coutinho, for the presentation. Having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of, having also taken into account the comment, comments presented by the applicant this evening, and again, thank you for running through um, the proposal for um, the panel, but, but also for the public. Uh, I'm satisfied that the minor variance uh, application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions. That the parking spaces A002 through to A014 be permitted in general accordance with the color coded in the parking plan dated February 3rd, 2021 and the parking plan revised number 15 dated February 2nd, 21. And that the owner agrees to place a notification in all offers of purchase and sale or an equivalent for all units advising prospective purchasers that the parking spaces A002 through to A014 are deficient in size and may not be suitable for certain vehicles and that the owner provide confirmation that the condominium declaration has been updated to specify 
um, and identify all substandard parking spaces to the satisfaction of the town and that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well, thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you, Mr. Cotino. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, members of the committee. Good night. Good night. All right, moving on to application CAV 022 of 2021 at 2100 Dunvegan Avenue. Again, it's application 022 of 2021 at 2100 Dunvegan Avenue. If anyone is interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, whenever you're ready. I'm ready. <clears throat> Okay, who is the agent that is speaking to this application? It's uh, Mr. Alagendi, um, and um, if you can, just ask him to unmute himself. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Alagendi. Uh, hi, Madam Chair. Miss you. Can you. Can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. We can't see you. Oh, yes. so, can you see me now? Yes, very good. Sorry, I we didn't realize it. It was a, a young. No worries. Lady. Don't I worry about that. No worries about that. Uh, I have received a favor a favorable staff report for two one hundred on Beacon Avenue, uh, and I'm seeking your approval. If you have no questions for me. Um, yes, we know that the application is a is a sunroom addition to the existing property with a minimum rear yard um, variance that you're requ you're requesting. Did yes. you have any plans or a presentation to put um, forward? No. Did you send any Did you send any submissions in? No, no, I did not send a presentation. Okay. Just to all right, it. members of the uh, of the committee. Does anyone have any questions? of Ms. Elgendi uh, at this time, or items of clarification with respect to this application? Okay, I see none. And there is no one here to speak to this application. Do we have anybody standing or, or waiting, Ms. Secretary-Treasurer? Madam Chair, we don't have anybody for this application. Okay, very well. Then we can take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm satisfied this application meets for test of planet minor variance on a relatively small addition that's sited on the property, I believe, that would minimize the impact on the neighbors. So I would move approval of the application subject to development proceed in accordance with the uh, site plan dated January 21st, 2021 and elevations dated uh, September 3rd, 2020, and that the approval expire within two years if the permit is not issued. And I also note that there's no... Um, okay. Did. Did the secretary treasurer get all that? It was choppy for me, so I don't know how it was for you. No, I uh, actually we we heard the the last uh, sentence. I heard the last sentence. Okay, um, I believe I, Mr. Tasky, do you want to give it a quick run again because it was choppy, so I don't think we all got it. Uh, I'll try it again. Fortunately, I seem to be freezing up here periodically. Um, so quickly, Madam Chair, I move the application be approved, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I would note that there was no objection from the community and the approval subject to the addition being built in general accordance with the 
site plan dated January 21st, 21, elevations dated uh, September 3rd, 2020, and that the approval expire within two years if the permit has not issued. Very well, thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Have a good night, Ms. Algendi. Thank you very much, you too. Thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to application CAB 023 of 2021 at 2336 Milestone Drive. Again, application CAB 023 of 2021 at 2336 Milestone Drive. If you are interested in speaking to this application, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. Staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing. Good evening, um, Mr. and Mrs. Bobinski. Bobinski, yeah. Uh, good Bobinski. evening. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee and town staff. Um, I'm Chris Bovinsky. This is my wife, Amanda Tepeto, and we're the homeowners of 2336 Millstone Drive. Um, if we go to the next slide. Um, so we're looking at a, a minor variance uh, for installation, install, installing the pool. Um, <clears throat> the current what is, it? is a we're requesting a setback of 1.52 meters um, from the flankage lot line instead of the uh, bylaw regulated th uh, 3.5 meters um, from the flankage lot line of our corner lot. Um, uh, this allows us a better, to better utilize our living space and it's a bit safer for our children just not having the pool right out the back door. Um, we've spoken to one set of our neighbors that's adjacent to our property and there's no objections to our request. Uh, we're happy at this time to take any questions if there's any. Thanks again for your time. Well, thank you. Are there any questions uh, of Mr. Babinski and at this time? I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, if there's no one waiting to speak to this application or has raised their hand through the panel, we can take the matter into committee. There is nobody waiting for the application. Okay, very well. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just having reviewed the applicant's uh, written submission and noting that there are no uh, verbal or written objections or support of the application. Also noting that the, st the staff report is in favor of the application. I'm prepared to move a motion that the application be approved as applied for finding that it does meet the four tests of the Planning Act. Uh, I'd like to include the following two conditions, that the pool be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan and sketches submitted with the application, and two, our standard uh, condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well, thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you very Great. much, Thank you. Madam Chair. Have a good evening. Members. Thank you. Thank you. You too. You too. Okay, application CAV 024 of 2021 at 2071 South Service Road West. Again, application CAV 024 of 2021 at 2071 south service road west if you're interested in speaking to this application please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions to join the video conferencing miss secretary treasurer whenever you're ready i'm ready um is mr john stanko with us yes he is i am Okay, very well. Can you, yeah, please put your camera on and go ahead, sir. Good 
Good evening, Madam Chair, committee members. Can you see me right now? Um, we still can't see you. We can only see the presentation. Okay. I'm trying to start the video, but it's not allowing me. Having some technical difficulties. Okay, go give, ahead. Give me one moment. Uh, all right. I uh, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, we're here in regards to an uh, app variance application for uh, our client, Roxanne Holdings Limited. Uh, we have noted the favorable report from the staff, uh, and we do have a presentation prepared. Uh, if we can skip to page three, please. We have a quick background, high level. Uh, we're requesting a variance for the installation of a solar PV system uh, on the client's facility. Uh, the variance is with respect to the setback and the architectural screening uh, that's required for mechanical equipment. Uh, the height of the parapet uh, is 25 centimeters, while the elevation of the modules is 49 centimeters. Uh, the modules that are tilted at a 10 degree angle uh, are elevated at 49 centimeters and only a small portion of them is elevated above the height of the parapet. If you skip to slide four, please. We have prepared a site plan. The project, as mentioned, is at 2071 South Service Road. Uh, it consists of 919 385 watt PV modules and 560 kilowatt inverters. Slide five, please. The elevations that have been submitted are the northeast elevation and the northwest elevation, as per the request from the staff. Slide six, please. This is a quick overview of the four conditions that uh, are required to be met. Uh, and we've noted the favorable uh, response from the staff in the app application. Slide seven, please. Further justifications for the uh, plan. And the line of sight drawings are on slide eight. This is the line of sight from the northeast and northwest uh, corners of the facility at the distances of 49 meters and 63 meters. As you can see, based on the line of sight, the modules are not visible. Slide nine, please. The southeast line of sight uh, at 62 meters and the southeast uh, line of sight uh, at 114 meters. The only uh, one that the modules are visible uh, with is the last line of sight at 114 meters. According to our calculations, only about 10 centimeters of the module is visible at that distance, uh, which is uh, virtually impossible to see from 114 meters away. Uh, slide 10 would be the southwest uh, lines of sight from 71 meters and 63 meters where the modules again are not in the line of sight and slide 11 is a street view from south service road slide 12 is also a street view slide 13 slide 14 and slide 15 is a simulation video uh, to show that the uh, modules are not visible from the various different viewpoints, uh, which we can go through if you'd like, uh, but it is a little bit lengthy. So uh, up to the committee, questions? up to the committee members, if they'd like to see the video, just uh, give me a, a yay or nay if you're satisfied with the presentation as it is. I can't see you, so you're enough to speak up. Yeah, okay, perfect. Is that a yay that we're okay? All right. Um, thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Stanko. Um, are there any questions or any uh, items of clarification that you would like? Ms. Murray, go ahead. 
Um, yes, uh, and this is a bit of an education for me, Madam Chair. A uh, question uh, through you to our authorization, authorized agent. Um, if you could share with me um, no screening, because um, uh, uh, architectural screening would cast a shadow on these panels. Uh, yes, so uh, if we were to install architectural screening uh, at certain points throughout the year, depending on the height of the architectural screening to screen the modules, and depending on where the sun is at that point in time in the year, it would uh, cast a shadow on some of the modules. When the modules are shaded, it uh, affects the output of the entire string of modules that's, that are connected to the shade, shaded modules in that string of array. Thank you. Any further questions or items of clarification? Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, if there is no one waiting to speak to this application, and Mr. Stankovic is familiar with the conditions that town staff have recommended, we're ready to take the matter into committee. Madam Chair, if you can repeat just to raise their hands, whoever wants to speak for the application. Okay, so we do have some panelists in, in our... Is, if there's anyone here who is in attendance who'd like to speak to application CAV 024 at 2021 at 2071 South Service Road West, please raise your hand and allow the Secretary Treasurer to um, put you through to our panel. Anything? No, Anyone? No, there is no, okay. nobody who wants to. Very well. Then we'll take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, having conducted my site visit, reviewed the applicant's written submission, as well as the town town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of, as well as the comments presented by the applicant this evening, uh, and thank you for the additional information. Um, Noting as well that there are no letters in opposition uh, from the community, I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions. That the solar panels be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan number one, dated 08-17-2020, and elevation drawings submitted with the application and that the approval expires two years from the date of a decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well. Thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. None opposed. Good night, Mr. Thank Stankovic. Thank you, Madam Chair and staff. All right. Next application is application CAV 026 of 2021 at 67 Raymar Place. Again, application CAV 026 of 2021 at 67 Raymar Place. If there's anyone here who'd like to speak to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and staff will be standing by to take your call and provide you with further instructions. Good evening, Ms. Vea. How are you? I'm uh, fine, thank you. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee and staff. Uh, I'm here on behalf of our homeowners, uh, Brenda Sweeney and Don Nelson. Uh, and we have noted the favorable report from staff. Um, and as you can see in the first page, um, Ms. Sweeney had distributed an information package of the application to the neighbors as shown and I had a chance to speak to them with the exception of two properties and you see there in the light blue color um, because they were unavailable. Uh, she did receive verbal support from all of them and she subsequently received four letters of support and I believe you have receipt of those letters uh, as I had uh, forwarded them to the town. Yes, we do. And uh, as I said, uh, the report from staff has been favorable but uh, if you want me to go through uh, presentation, I, I'm happy to do that. Well, your 
your slides are already up, you can go through them um, since there's a lot of interest from the public um, just for future viewing on the our website. Oh, all right, if you could go to the second page, please, which is the uh, site plan, yes. Um, and what we're asking for are two, uh, two minor variances. One is a lot coverage, which is uh, as of now, the existing lot coverage is at 35% permitted, and there's a slight increase of 2% in the lot coverage that we are um, asking uh, for. Uh, and it is for the um, deeper overhang at the front entrance and as well as the architectural feature that you see there to the left of it, uh, that uh, increases it to about 2%. Uh, the other minor variance that we we're asking for is a residential floor area, and you could see in that dark area there in the site plan, and that's for the uh, addition of the second floor. Um, and uh, it just uh, an increase of 10.3% in the floor area that's created with the addition above and also there's the, um, I mean, the, just a slight increase of 5%, and that's just to uh, the contribution of the enlarged chimney, and also because we are uh, planning an addition of the exterior insulation around the uh, perimeter of the house. Uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, the second, the next slide. This, the next slide, please. As you can see, this is the front elevation, and again, you see the, the front entrance, that's the one that we are asking for the minor variance, and also for that feature at the left-hand side on the, um, uh, the, the architectural feature on the left-hand side, that's, uh, again, that's asking for the uh, minor variance over lot coverage. And above there, uh, the, above the garage, you see the um, Lot, uh, sorry, the floor area ratio that we are um, seeking a minor variance for. Um, and I believe on this, this next slide, please. And, and there you see the, uh, uh, the raised roof, which uh, we would like to note that that is not part of the minor variance. Uh, next slide, please. And then that's the, the rear elevation. And then the next slide, please, that's the last slide. And that's the, uh, the north elevation. Very well, thank you. Are there any questions of Ms. Vea at this time? Items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, has anyone called in for this application to speak to it or there's any Anybody in the panelists who've uh, raised their hands? Madam Chair, I do see, see some phone callers, but I don't know for which application and also um, if you can repeat to raise their hands if they wanted to speak in regards to this application would be great. Okay, we are looking at application CAV026 of 2021 at 67 Raymar Place. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please raise your hand and you will be elevated to the panelist to speak. And you can let me know if there's anyone on these calls that uh, is interested in this application or they're calling in for another one. Just bear with us. The, the system is taking a little longer than usual.
The Secretary Treasurer, has any, um, are any of these calls for this application? No, they are not, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, we're ready to take the matter into committee then. Go ahead, Mr. Tolowski. Thanks, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'd be pleased to move this application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. I would note the four letters of support from the community and that even with the variances, this dwelling is going to be smaller and less imposing than pretty much every other dwelling in, on that street. Uh, I would make that approval and subject to the addition being general accordance with the site plan and elevations dated January 28th, 21, and that a building permit issue within two years. Very well. Thank you. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you, Ms. Vea. We appreciate your patience. Good night. Thank you. Have a good, good night. night. Good night. Okay, uh, application CAV 027 of 2021 at uh, 352 Callahan Crescent. Again, CAV 027 of 2021 at 352 Callahan Crescent. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please call 905-815-6095 and uh, staff will be standing by to take your call. Who's here for this application, Madam Treasurer? Madam Chair, I don't see the owners. Um, if you can repeat to raise their hands, I do have some phone caller and maybe it's for this application. But okay. I don't see the- Very the... well. We're looking at application CAV 027 of 2021 at 352 Callahan Crescent. If you're interested in speaking to this application, please raise your hand. And then uh, the phone calls are your purview. You'll have to let me know. Okay. Madam Chair, if you can ask them to unmute. Um, okay. Uh, please unmute yourself if you're interested in speaking to this application. We don't have a name or an identifier, so. Hello? I think we're having some technical difficulties. Madam Secretary Treasurer, um, I could see again, uh, but I I don't see the phone call. Um, maybe if you can ask again to unmute. Okay, please unmute yourself if you are here to speak to application CV zero two seven of twenty twenty one at three five two Callahan Crescent. This is the application for the in-ground pool with the um, rear yard setback. So the applicants have not called in yet? They're not in the panelists? Um, I don't see, I see somebody in attendance list, the same number as on the screen. Um, and it looks like they, they called um, in. So just they are on mute. Like they, they are, we, uh, are you unable to speak to them directly? Okay, let me see if I can now, uh, no, and I lost now them. So okay, let's anymore. skip this one. Let's skip uh, number eight and we'll take it. Uh, we'll just go to the next application okay. until we Sorry. get another call. Hello? Sorry. Hello? 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 Yes. Yes. Hi. Hi. This is for 352 Callahan. Yes, we've been calling for that one for quite some time. Did you lose the call or was this a technical glitch? Yeah, we're not familiar with 
the way that with what we're doing, we're just homeowners. So um, I think we're a little late in joining the call. Okay, no problem. You're here now, Mr. Colgan. Am I am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yeah, you can call me whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Is Paul okay with you? Yes. Okay, very well. Go ahead, Paul. Um, this is for your in-ground pool, correct? With your That's minimum, right. yeah. Oh, don't skip it, no. <laughs> no, well, we're not skipping it. Don't worry. We were going the, to just move to the next application until you called back instead of holding up the line. So don't worry. Did we lose you? Uh, no, I'm still here. Okay, the floor is yours. Go ahead, sir. Oh. Did you um, did you send in some paperwork or a presentation into the town to show the committee what your application is about? We're familiar with it. It's okay. simply to present to the public. Did yeah, you send um, anything in? That's right. Yeah, we sent our drawings in. We're looking for a variance for our pool, um, and I guess the setback is supposed to be three point five meters away from uh, our lot line, and we're requesting a two point two uh, variance. Very well, that's correct. Anything else? Um, town staff can put your drawings up if they'd like. Do you have, um, are there any questions of Paul, Mr. Paul at this time or any items of no. clarification from the town, from the committee members? No, if you need anything clarified, I, I can answer it for you, but I, on my behalf, I don't have any questions. Okay, very well, thank you. Uh, Ms. Murray, you had a question? Uh, no, Madam Chair, I'm just wondering if perhaps town staff would be kind enough to put up the drawing um, so we have it on record and for those that may be um, viewing from at home. Thank you. I had asked, I'm just not sure if they have it. We're waiting on that. I'm putting now. Like if you... Okay, very well. Thank you. hear me yeah we've got you oh, I think okay. just town staff is is trying to pull out your um, drawings to put okay, them up you. on the board it's there thanks for your patience Mr. Paul, if there's anything that you'd like to add while the drawings are on the screen, feel free to do so. Um, no, I don't think I have anything additional to add. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I think that's fine. Are there any items of clarifications or questions of Mr. Paul at this time? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Oh, you weren't raising your hand, okay. All right, so we have no uh, questions, and it's pretty straightforward. Who would like to move a... Uh, go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, having uh, reviewed the uh, application in detail, uh, as well as uh, noting that the town's written staff report is in support of the application, um, also noting that there were no oral or written objections for the application, I would like to move a motion that the application be approved as applied for, finding that it meets the four tests of the Planning Act. And I'd like to include the following two conditions. One, that the pool be constructed in general accordance with the submitted site plan dated February 14th, 2021. And two, our standard condition that the approval expires two years 
from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Sorry, I think there was one letter in support. Yes, there yeah. was a letter in support from the neighbor at 316 Callahan Crescent. Yeah, I'd like to note that as well. Sorry. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, any, any discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay, your application has been approved, sir. Great. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you, you too. Good night. All right, so moving on to application CAV 005 of 2021, deferred from January the 19th of 2021 at 459 Chamberlain Lane. Uh, again, the application is CAV 005 2021, deferred from January 19th of 2021 at 459 Chamberlain Lane. The uh, number to call should you um, want to speak to this application is 905-815-6095. Okay, Ms. Liang, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. So, um, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair and the committee members, and uh, this is Chuan Liang. Uh, we defer from last committee meeting uh, for the, the building height of, of the roof of the garage. And this issue has been uh, settled. And then we come back again for the same variance of the front yard setback. We are, we, uh, we're supposed to have 14.99 meters front yard setback and the, uh, the original uh, Planning asked for 16 point something 60, 68 meters. So we are showing this map to the public to show that this is a the dot the, 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 the small dot house is our house and originally it has 17.68 meters frontier setback. It's uh, uh, much bigger than the neighbors. The neighbors are just a uh, 13 to 14 meter frontier setback. Um, we propose uh, 14.99 is uh, now it will, will be slightly, still slightly bigger than the neighbors. And you can see the streetscape is uh, this whole lineup houses, and we are not going forward than other houses. And the next slide, please. Uh, this shows the satellite map. You see the the, very, uh, the vegetations of the street. It's a lot of big trees. Next slide, please. So this is our site plan. Uh, so you can see the neighbor's house. Uh, but not forward and their houses. And also we have more side yard setback and the back yard setback than the original house. Uh, so our side yard setback is five meters, much bigger than requested. And, uh, and also the, we noticed there's a neighbor objection. Uh, he comments, his comments about uh, he, he preferred one story house than two story. And he also has concern about the uh, water flow. The rainwater flow might aware, uh, affect the site. And uh, so I think our point is we have two story houses and we have less roof area than the bungalows, than one story, right? So to get the same floor areas, so we have smaller roof areas. So that is better for the environment. So we have less hardscape area than the bungalows. So I think that's a better way for the new houses to build if you if you want to better for the environment, if you lower your coverage. So 
we only have 19% of coverage, much lower than requested. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the elevation of the house. So just let public see. Uh, it's just a normal two-story house. And uh, we have a lot of side yard setback. So it's, it's not escaped. It's not big scale houses. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is the front elevation of our site. Uh, you see the there's a, there there are a lot of major trees, and you don't even see the house, even uh, if it's a west story house. You only see the trees, and uh, there's no no house you can see. If, if even if it's two story, it will not stand out of the street view. It's also it's still behind those trees, and we propose a circular driveway. So it's originally the driveway is at the left side. The new proposed driveway is uh, slightly beside that uh, fire hydrant. So it's almost there. Uh, or, originally at the front yard, we have something like circular condition. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a street, uh, street view so people can see what's the uh, condition of the site is uh, both sides are all very high trees. Uh, if, it, if it's two story, it won't affect the environment or look. Next slide, please. And this is the neighbor's yard opposite the street. Uh, just, just for the public to see what we're going to build. Next slide, please. Uh, this is another neighbor, just north of our property. These are, these are two-story house, so it's, it's not very high looking. Next slide, please. So there are also some two-story new houses built on the same street, not very far away. So our two-story house won't, won't be the, the only one. It's already been built, many of them. Next slide, please. Just, just the same street, two-story house is on the show. Next slide, please. Yeah, another, another house is along the street. Next slide, please. Yeah, another house is, next slide, please. So this is a circular driveway already now existing on the same street of our neighbors. Next slide, please. Uh, this is another circular driveway on the same street. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a, 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 just a tree protection plan to, sh to show you that along our side yard, so we have bigger side yard than the original existing houses, so we can protect the major trees along our property lines. Uh, I think we, are, we have consideration of the existing condition of the vegetation. I think that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Liang. Um, are there any questions or items of clarification on Ms. Liang at this time? Okay, I see none. Um, Ms. Secretary, Treasurer, has anyone called in for this application to speak to the application? Madam Chair, I do have a um, caller, uh, Mr. Anderson, and um, I don't know if he wants to speak. He's on the panelist list. Very well. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Anderson. We see you. Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. I, I'm Don Anderson. I'm uh, two doors. Uh, Doors uh, west of the, uh, the property under question. Uh, I have uh, been a resident here for 51 years, and I generally have not don't object to development. It's, it's within the zoning bylaws, which unfortunately over my lifetime here have changed quite a bit what they allow and not allow. But my biggest concern uh, has been that this is quite a large house. 
spite of the nice presentation, which uh, you just saw. But they, uh, I didn't understand why this very large house, which will be, you know, affect, I think, the land, the streetscape along the, our side of Chamberlain Lake, is moving forward uh, two meters, almost two meters, uh, in a house that size, which will obviously dominate the streetscape. When it should be back two meters, in my view. And uh, on, on top of that, the circular driveway on the plan that I originally got here anyway, and there may have been adjustments, it looked to me like the driveway coverage was 50% of this reduced front yard. So uh, I then got a, a, a lovely response from the uh, site reviewer, uh, Magda, and she assured me that, in fact, the coverage was less than 50%. But boy, it must be a few decimals, <laughs> less than 50%. And I just, my concern was that the house was moving it forward and big circular drive, it would be the high house, and it would, it would kind of dominate and change the streetscape. And that was just the basis of my, uh, of my concerns. The, uh, the uh, response of the town staff to my other questions is satisfactory. So thank you for the chance to speak. Thank you, Mr. Um, Anderson. I, I, I note your letter we, we, and your communication with town staff. As you know that the only matter before us today is the minimum front yard variance that they're requesting. So in terms of the size of the house, in terms of the, the other setbacks, everything is in compliance with the, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I believe Ms. Liang already answered that question, but I'll give her a chance to put up that um, that slide where she shows you the streetscape, and you can see that the house is more or less in alignment with the two houses to the left and to the right, if I understood that correctly. But go ahead, Ms. Liang. Uh, as for the circular driveway, I asked for less than 50% of coverage of the driveway area. We are now have 40, 42 percent, so it's, it's comply. Okay, thank you for your clarification. And and uh, with respect to the house moving forward and your front yard variance, uh, it's because the bylaw requests uh, the front yard setback minimum, minim, uh, the maximum front yard setback, but sorry, the minimum is uh, original house setback minus one meters. And our original house is far more setback than neighbors. So it's 17.68 uh, meters, and the neighbor only 13 meters, 14 meters. So if we put so so far back, then we have very small backyard. And also the backyard is the conservation area, right? So we just want to put the house uh, at the same location with the neighbors. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, is there any questions of Mr. Anderson at this time before I, um, I, I see if there's any other panelists that would like to address the committee or ask questions? Okay, I see none. Ms. Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone else who's waiting to speak to the committee or address this application? No, Madam Chair. Okay, very well. Uh, if there are no further questions of Mr. Anderson or Ms. Liang, we're, we're prepared to take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? <coughs> Start the discussion. Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm satisfied that this um, application meets the four tests of the Planning Act. Uh, I, I would note, as you pointed out, the only variance at issue here is the front yard setback. Uh, I believe it is appropriate to try to regularize the streetscape in this case, and would note that I believe the area that's closest to the street is a one-story portion in the front of the garage. And uh, I, I would note the uh, resident's concern and uh, Again, I think uh, I've addressed his concerns in that uh, it's appropriate to regularize the streetscape and the, I believe the impact uh, 
of moving it forward would be minimum. I, Madam Chair, I would make that approval subject to Uh, the dwelling be built in general accordance with the site plan elevation revision number one dated January 25th, 21, and that a building permit issue within two years. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Slavsky. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support? Okay. Your application has been approved. None opposed. Thank, Thank you both for your submissions. Have a good Thank night. You. Good night. Good night. Okay, so we have application CAV 080 of 2020, deferred from February 2nd of 2021 at 2552 Rivers Bend Lane. Again, it's application CAV 080 of 2020, deferred from February the 2nd of 2021 at 2552 Rivers Bend Lane. Mr. Nelson, are you, uh, who is, who is um, representing the uh, owners? It'll be myself, Ruth Victor. Okay, good evening. Okay. And, and I have Mr. Nelson. Uh, as a speaker as well, he's a panelist, and Mr. Adebayo, you're here from the region, correct? Correct. Yes, Very Mr. Well. Nelson is our engineer, okay. and if there is any questions with regards to that, we have the opportunity to um, move forward and answer those questions. We thought it might be helpful for him to be here. Okay, very well. Uh, give me a second. Um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, has anyone else signed in for this application, given it is the last application of the night? I have a Len Rodominski uh, showing on my panel as well. Um, Madam Chair, um, he's also on the application, so I, um, I believe he was, he's registered too. But okay. I don't know if he wants Ms. to Ms. Victor, is Mr. Rodominski with you? Yes, he's not, not going to be presenting. Okay, very well. Thank you. Okay, so if may, I may have the presentation, please. Okay, the application before you today is for a, a reconstruction and of an enlargement of a existing one-story dwelling before you is an image of the proposed home. Next slide, please. As they mentioned, um, there are two variances requested at this time to permit the enlargement of an existing one-story dwelling and the erection of a new detached accessory dwelling on the subject land, whereas Section 414A of the bylaw requires the subject lands to be serviced by municipal sewage systems in this instance. At this time, this property is serviced by an existing septic system, and also we have a northerly interior side yard variance of 1.2 meters for the detached accessory building that is actually allowing it to be reconstructed in its current situation so it maintains an alignment with the current driveway which is basically going to be maintained in its current location next slide please i just wanted to give a wee bit of history regarding river bend lane there's been in 2004 um council of the town of oakville did consider a report regarding the rehabilitation of Rivers Bend Lane. And one of the real critical issues that they were dealing with at that time and why it was reconstructed in a substandard condition was to minimize the impacts of any reconstruction of that lane and to ensure a minimal to no loss of trees. And that's going to be important when we get into the discussion about the servicing options and about the exploration of sanitary sewers of this property. I just want to make that the issue of character of this road, um, its appearance, its sense of place and proximity of the neighborhood and the adjacent um, environmental areas are all considerations and that there was a very clear direction that the lane was to be reconstructed as you see today. We did do our first um, minor variance submission in August. It was deferred at the September 29th meeting in part because there were significant questions raised by the region of Halton. We provided a supplemental submission to the region on October the 13th. 
That included a very detailed planning letter, letter setting out policy conformity questions, the explanation of the application of the urban servicing guidelines. We also provided an engineering submission regarding the sanitary sewer extension investigation and why it was deemed to be impractical, as well as an engineering submission regarding the septic system design. There was a question that they wanted to ensure that what we were proposing would have no impact on the adjacent natural area. So that was addressed. We do have a conservation halt permit in hand at this time, even for the revised application that's before you. We have done a second CAV in application, committee in application. It was again deferred because we, the regional comments were still outstanding at that time. We're now before you today and regional comments are still outstanding. So at this point in time, in terms of moving forward with the application, um, the region of Halton has had the information submitted to them since October the 13th. Um, we have had ongoing and extensive discussions with the manager of the development area um, function in terms of what's gone on with this application. We've basically been pretty much in contact with them every three to four weeks regarding as we've proceeded through this proposal. We would request that the committee consider the application, either approve it as we move forward or deny it based on the fact there are concerns that you have with it, just so that we can move past the point of not having the regional comments in hand and move it to another forum where the region would be able to make a decision as they would be required to put a position before LPEC. Ma'am, next slide, please. Okay, just in terms of a bit of the changes on the property to provide some context. That septic system, as it currently exists on that property, actually is within a portion of the property that the Conservation Halton would say is totally prohibited for any development. The septic system would need to, whether the existing house would be renovated in its current form or an extension enlargement to the existing home, we would need a new septic system. The new septic system that you see there is based on contemporary standards for a septic system. And it is an enlargement of the system only because standards have changed since the 1950s and that these systems actually cover a significantly larger area than they did before. I believe we lost Ms. Victor. Hello? Yeah, you cut out. Oh, I'm sorry. So the septic system that you see there would be the septic system for the existing house or the new house. It represents the current standards for septic system design. With regards to the house, if you look on the pink outline, you will see the, outprint, the imprint of the existing house. The purple line is the new home. You will see that there is just a very minor expansion of the house. It's just about just shy of 300 square feet. Um, in essence, the new home follows is mirroring the footprint um, along the rear wall and some of the other walls in terms of moving forward. There is a small corner of the property that you will see that is having to be removed because it's in an area of the site that is prohibited from development and in terms of addressing conservation Holton's um, concerns. Um, next we, slide, please. Uh, keep losing you. Oh, my apologies. Okay. One of the questions is regarding the Halton Urban Servicing Guidelines and the statement that the um, private services are not permitted or private septic are not permitted within the urban area. The regional Halton has specific guidelines that have been set out to identify when private services are permitted and we meet these policies and basically for minor residential development um, where the respective municipal service are determined to be unavailable or available at extreme expense the services currently are at Bronny Road in addition there's permitted with the same criteria for the repair or replacement of an existing private service next slide please One of the questions and comments within the staff report has to do with the fact that Kate's Commons to the north was able to be rebuilt on um, sewer 
and um, a, a sanitary sewer, and why can we not here? It's in part because we have two issues. One is we reverse grade. Um, Cape Commons could just do grinder pumps and pump out. They could use gravity. We reverse grade. So we have a much more challenging and much more expensive um, solution regarding sanitary sewers. And as you can see in this drawing, the installation of a sanitary sewer system would negatively impact trees within the area and would be a very high challenge to be fit within the road bed, the 5.5 meter road bed, and would have to sit basically along its edge. In addition, I just want to bring to your attention that um, the, rec the comments in our engineering submission that basically say with regards to the cost of this sanitary sewer, which is over a million and a quarter, a million two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for it. So there is a number of issues regarding the possibility of actually putting a sanitary sewer in this location. Next slide, please. We equally, because it's important, this is a change within this community. All of the homes that you see here that have indicated support, all of these houses are serviced by septic systems. All of the residents are in support of this property being redeveloped on private services and support the application. Okay, that's it for my, my um, comments. As I may mention, our engineer is on the call if anyone has any additional questions and answers. Thank you. Very well, thank you, Ms. Victor. Do we have any questions of the panel at this time? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Ms. Victor, your presentation focused on the region. There's uh, extensive non-supportive comments from the town in front of us. Um, would you like to speak to those comments, please? Certainly. Uh, it is my opinion that the town's comments regarding the provincial policy statement are actually incorrect. The provincial policy statement does not only permit um, development on full municipal services within the urban area, but however sets out a hierarchy and a decision-making process regarding private services and specifically partial services. And in my opinion, we actually meet, uh, we are in conformity with the provincial policy statement. Um, so that is the, um, the most um, fundamental question. He raises an issue as well about the fact that this represents an enlargement of a home and that somehow another an enlargement of a legal non-conforming use is something that's wrong or bad or inappropriate, whatever word you wish to use. I do address that the actual pr purpose of the provisions of 45.2 and the provisions are set out in the official plan that it says it may be appropriate in special circumstances. It may be appropriate to consider the extension or enlargement of non-conforming uses within section 28.8 of the official plan. To me, in this situation, due to the extreme high cost of sanitary sewer infrastructure, because of the clear direction regarding the town, regarding the character of the road and the desire to preserve trees along this road in the decision of the town when they came forward um, on their reconstruction plan, that it would not be appropriate to install a sanitary sewer along this road at this time for one single detached dwelling. If someone in the future assembles all of the houses along this lane and we're proposing them for a significant redevelopment, it then would be appropriate because the character of the road would fundamentally change due to that change of the significant redevelopment of all the parcels. So I disagree with the comment that somehow or another that this is not appropriate because it's a minor enlargement of the house, as I said, less than 300 square feet. Neither is that this is something that shouldn't be considered as part of the policies. Um, again, I may mention with regards to Cape Common. Um, yes, Cape Common was a block of land. It was developed comprehensively. Yes, if that was to happen in this situation, yes, municipal services, full municipal services would be something that I would believe was appropriate. But what we are dealing with is one lot at the end of a lane 
designed road and not looking at the comprehensive redevelopment. So I do not believe that those comments are applicable or relevant in terms of this context of what we're looking at. Um, with regards to the comments of the interior side yard setback for the garage, I do agree with those. And so it's my opinion, I do not agree that the application is not appropriate in terms of consideration by the committee. I just want to bring your attention in terms of the comments as well, that the Conservation Authority has identified that we've met all of their requirements in their considerations, and therefore that's why we have a development permit on hand. Hopefully that answers your question. Any further questions or items of clarification? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just to follow up, as, um, as Victor has implied that uh, the staff report is incorrect, I just uh, would like to give Mr. Hassan an up. Sorry, through you, Madam Chair. I missed the, the last end of, of the question. So did I. It was choppy for me, too. Go ahead. Uh, try again, Mr. Talowski. Thank you. I just wanted to give Mr. Hassan an opportunity to respond, as Ms. Victor has indicated, that the staff report is incorrect. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair, in relation to the, the staff report from 2004 or the, the current committee report? I think she um, had indicated that your characterization of uh, PPS was incorrect and she disagrees with your assertions that uh, it doesn't comply with the official plan and zoning bar. Yeah, thank you for that clarification to you, Madam Chair. I guess in regards to the comments that are provided in the current um, committee of adjustment uh, staff report, staff look at this um, proposal in relation again to the official plan as it relates to specifically the um, servicing requirements and the legal non-conforming status of the lot. There's no concerns with the accessory building because that does not trigger any servicing requirements. Staff just do have concerns about this um, property being entrenched in the current um, privately serviced septic configuration, noting that um, the surrounding area is capable of being developed on uh, full municipal services. So um, we are somewhat fearful that in, in the case of this property developing with the private septic systems that the abutting properties may also uh, develop in the same manner. And that, in fact, um, would not align with the official plan policies in relation to the provincial direction for the uh, built-up areas to be intensified and um, be built out with the existing land um, value that uh, is in front of us today. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Um, through you, Madam Chair, to, to town staff, where, where I'm struggling a little bit is while I, I, I appreciate that policy, the rest of the people on the street are on septic and it's not being redeveloped. And, and so I, I don't understand if un, until this, the town decides they're going to bring services um, to all of the houses, I, I don't understand how this is applicable in this, in this case. Yeah, and through you, Madam Chair, unfortunately, I, I wasn't with the town in the, during the time of the writing of that 2004 report, but that was under uh, former bylaw, former official plan, and uh, former provincial policies. So I'm not sure what the stance of the town would be at this time um, in terms of the, the reconstruction of the road and potentially um, services being connected down towards this property. Any other questions? If there are no um, items of clarification or concerns, um, Ms. Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone who is standing in, in queue to speak to this application or has called in? while we're having this discussion? No, Madam Chair. Okay, very well. If um, everyone is satisfied, we can take the matter into committee and start uh, the ball rolling on 
how we'd like to handle this application. Go ahead, Mr. Hassan. Sorry, I didn't see you. No problem, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm just wondering if, if uh, regional staff maybe can supplement my comments at all, if they have anything else to add in relation to the servicing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, from the regional perspective, um, it is a matter of um, principle of development under the PPS. Um, the preference would be that the neighborhood be serviced by full municipal services. Um, however, um, there are possible alternatives that the applicant can explore. Um, the region was not notified that the application proposal was going to change coming to this meeting, so hence why we were not able to provide comments. Um, again, we would encourage the applicant to like uh, look into alternative options for servicing. Um, you did mention the um, the uh, gravity pump station, the grinder pumps. That could be an alternative that could be further looked at by the region. Um, I'll just make that as an option um, for the applicant to look into going forward. I actually have a question of, of region. Um, mm -hmm. Given the aerial map that was shown by Ms. Victor and the number of houses that are on private septic tanks, um, mm -hmm. I understand that if, if, if your notion is to proceed with a um, regular service and you'd like the entire area to be done, that would seem plausible if they were all developed at the same time. But right now, there's only that one house that's asking to, for redevelopment. Um, are we going to hold our breaths until the entire area is redeveloped? Like, I just, I want to wrap my mind about what your preference is if you know that there's a plan coming that these other houses are going to be redeveloped then that would make sense um, from the region's uh, mandate um, essentially it, it is like uh, i would say um, a cash 22 um, like you have already um, alluded to we can't um, rely on one property to um, develop or wait for the others to come and, and connect However, there is a medium for that to happen. Um, the applicant, again, can explore that option um, whereby um, two thirds of the neighbor can um, submit a petition to the region to prompt the region to um, go through that process of um, installing um, servicing within the neighborhood. Okay. The, medium, the medium is there and the option is there. So what does Ms. Victor have to say about that then? Okay, sorry to interrupt. I know you have brought it into committee, but I just want to make sure that the, all of the facts are before the committee. When I made reference to the October submission, he said, well, did the region, did we come forward to the region with a design for a service? That's actually what the drawing is that I provided to you that was provided to the region in October. Um, um, as I mentioned, we did a full planning analysis, a full engineering analysis, as well as um, the um, septic system analysis. The region has had it in their hands since October. I don't know what else we can provide at this time. As I made mention as well, the residents within the community are supportive of this house being redeveloped on septic services. That if you take it in terms of what it means is that they're not interested in participating in bringing in an over $1.2 million to $5 million services. The situation that was described to you by regional staff would mean that all of the property owners would need to front the cost of those services. They would be cost sharing it. That would not be a regional funded project. That would be a privately funded project. That would be at an individual cost of over $200,000 per house. The neighbors within the area, it's a beautiful, quiet community very established in terms of the people that live in that community. It is not an actively redeveloping area. And they're not interested in contributing $200,000 each to obtain sanitary servicing at this time. Sorry, I may not have been as clear as possible, but the issue had not been raised prior to that point in the presentation. So I do hope that answers the question. The region has all of the information in their hands and have had it since October. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any other questions or items of clarification before we take the matter into committee?
Okay, then we'll take it now into committee. Who would like to start the ball rolling? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Um, so I'm, I may need a little help uh, from the rest of the committee on this, or perhaps uh, uh, it, please do chime in, but I'm gonna say, Madam Chair, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's written submission, uh, as well as uh, reading the town's written support, uh, uh, st staff report, which I note is not in support of this uh, variance. Um, uh, I think the comments presented by the applicant this evening are compelling. Uh, I think the notion of continuing to hold up uh, or hold hostage um, these particular um, uh, applicants uh, based on uh, a future um, development uh, or delivering of municipal services uh, that we have no date for uh, in the future and, and a, a potential cost to all of the neighbors and the neighbors are all, all on septic, which uh, was not clear to me um, uh, in, in when it was deferred previously. Uh, I'm gonna say that um, I was very much influenced by the submission presented and I'm satisfied that the minor variance application meets all four tests under the Planning Act and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for the, for the variance um, uh, as submitted for um, to permit a minimum interior side yard of 1.2 to the detached accessory building. Uh, I think I've got that. Uh, correctly, um, and that under section 45.2 of the Planning Act is to permit the enlargement of the existing single detached dwelling and a new detached garage on partial municipal services. Um, uh, and I would say based on drawings dated 07-12-20 and uh, with the uh, remaining condition, bear with me, uh, the remaining condition that the approval expires two to years from the date of a decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Very well, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Uh, Madam Chair, I would like to uh, support the motion. Uh, as mentioned, also noting that there were uh, five, I believe five letters in support of this motion uh, from many of the neighbors on the street. I do support the motion. I do understand why, uh, you know, this application had been deferred a number of times. I am sensitive as well to the fact that, uh, you know, there are times where the town and the region are looking to get uh, buildings and, and homes onto municipal services. But I think in this case and in where this property is, and also supporting the fact that all of the other neighbors are currently on septic, as well as noting that in the event that they were interested in pulling in uh, the municipal services that they would have all gathered together for that. I think at this point in time, considering where those neighbors are, uh, you know, they are finding that uh, cost prohibitive. Um, so I, I, I find that uh, I am wanting to support the application as applied for with the conditions submitted by uh, our member finding that it, it meets the four tests of the Planning Act and uh, I just wanted to support the motion. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. Any further discussion? Okay. So um, all those in support? Okay. All those against? Mr. Talowski? Mr. Uh, Chair, I was, uh, I was uh, wanting to speak. You didn't see my hand, I guess. No, you were frozen. Okay, um, I did. you were frozen. So uh, when did you freeze? Like uh, I only heard Mr. Uh, Flemington, and then I asked if there were any further comments. Yes, and that's when I put my hand up. I guess you didn't see okay. it. Okay. No, no, the, you were totally frozen. Go ahead, sir. 
Okay, Madam Chair, I'm going to have to take a tell the contrary view to my colleagues. It's very clear the province, the region, and the town wants development off private services. Yes, there are exceptions. There's always exceptions, but the applicant here has not satisfied either the town or the region of an appropriate alternative. And Madam Chair, I'm very concerned. Uh, I'm not support. I'm not surprised that the other residents are in support because I, I'm concerned we're now going to see all those residents wanting to renovate their houses and do it all in private septic systems. There's an opportunity now that services could be put in before we start letting individuals continue to perpetuate non-conforming uses. I don't think that's appropriate. I cannot support the application to approve. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Talowski, for your submission. Um, I believe the, that uh, everyone uh, has spoken. Um, I think we'll take it to a vote. Who um, the the motion is to approve uh, as submit as applied for, with the conditions that Ms. Murray uh, put on record. All those in support. Okay, and all those opposed. Okay, your application has been approved. One opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, we have confirmation of minutes to um, go through. It's the minutes for February 15th. Ms. Murray? Motion to approve the minutes, Madam Chair. Thank you. And then we have a motion for adjournment. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Flemington. We are adjourned at 842.